night. Let's move on to our other topic of discussion today, which is the disbanding of uh, some UPA era committees. Now, four panels have been disbanded by uh, the Narendra Modi government today. This is another UPA legacy. We're questioning this. One of those uh, uh, committees that have been disbanded is, of course, the unique identification project uh, as well, the, the sort of flagship scheme of the government, uh, the UPA government that we saw. It cost the exchequer 3,500 crores. Eight years later, of course, it was um, termed non-mandatory by the Supreme Court. We're going to be joined on our uh, show to discuss this by uh, Harsh Mandar, the uh, social uh, activist and the former IAS officer, as well as Arun Myra, member of the Planning Commission. Uh, we are, uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam is staying with us on this discussion. In studio, we have MK Venu of the uh, Amar Ujala group as well uh, with us uh, in the studio. I want to take this first to actually uh, Arun Myra uh, to tell us, sir, we are looking at disbanding committees that have already cost the exchequer a lot of money in the past. Uh, just that's just a waste. How do we write off three thousand five hundred crores, for example, for the unique identification project? I think there is uh, the bigger question which you raised is that we are uh, disbanding many committees, and uh, and you're asking a question about a particular committee. But I like to stay with the the bigger question about disbanding uh, committees. I think we had just too many committees. Uh, in the government uh, okay. in the last few years. Uh, the committees would not meet. Uh, they would make recommendations in some cases after meeting. The recommendations were not implemented. The problem would persist and so another committee would be formed for addressing the very same issue. So the proliferation of committees uh, and uh, bodies and so-called institutions to deal with issues, the proliferation of all of these was creating further confusion and further delays. So I'm very glad actually that someone is looking at cutting out the number of layers and the number of committees that uh, we have set up, which are in fact preventing things from getting done because we need to get things done now. Right. Okay. I'm going to take that uh, to uh, Harsh Mandar as well. When you look at these uh, these reports, first of you know the EGOMs, the GOMs being disbanded, now committees that are looking at important schemes of the government also being streamlined. Do you follow? Uh, do you believe that it is about sort of minimum government, government and maximum governance? No, I think that, uh, you know, as uh, uh, Arun Mahira said, uh, you know, if there are too many committees uh, for everything, it can lead to procrastination and delay in decision making. Uh, and, and some streamlining of that is, is welcome. But I think that we need to get a balance right because you know, uh, in, a de in a democracy which is, uh, of a country which is as diverse uh, as ours, it is important to also have a consultative process. And, you know, uh, because the persons who are taking decisions uh, just to make sure that, uh, you know, they get uh, other opinions, uh, th that there's, uh, uh, you know, the subjectivity is reduced. I think that we do need to have a consultative process. Uh, you know, there's a, there, there's a worry that if the government gets too centralized in its decision making. So it's really about the balance between consultation and uh, procrastination and delay, I think getting that balance right will be the challenge before this government. Okay, let's take that to the BJP and Lalita Kumar Mangalam as well. While there is sort of merit in the argument of streamlining, Harsh Mandar also pointing out that the balance needs to be right. Uh, the fact is that could, could the fact that there is not that much discussion and discourse mean that there isn't enough consultation within the government? No, far from it. Uh, uh, while certain uh, governmental committees, etc., have been dismantled, uh, Mr. Modi has made it clear that he is going to probably recast a few other committees. For example, uh, the one on Cabinet Committee on Security, the CCS, is going to be redone uh, and will be again uh, brought into active, uh, uh, you know, will be made active again. So uh, it's not as if uh, there's, it's all going to be as is being misquoted and misstated by many uh, of the Congress supporters of the Congress itself, that it's going to be one ministry, one man. Mr. Modi has many times made it more than amply clear and from what how the government has 
appointed its ministers etc and the way these ministers are working together on several issues mm -hmm. for example the cleaning of the ganga where uh, the industries the uh, minister nitin gadkari both jhavadekar uh, ji and uma bharti had a joint sitting because uh, shipping environment and water were right. very important uh, uh, and will play a common role in these in the cleaning of the ganges right so it's not that there is going to be no consultative process in fact we've cut down the number of ministries itself so that uh, the process of decision making can be energized and decisions can be taken much quicker than they were in the last 5 years in oh. upa2 okay. one of the biggest problems that... of the upa2 was that no decisions were being seen as being taken therefore uh, the, this, it's not as if we have just scrapped everything because right. they are the legacies of the UPA. That's that's nothing to do with it. What has been scrapped is what looked like being totally, I mean, totally n almost uh, non-functional. For example, the p committee on prices. What did it do for prices? Right. It couldn't hold prices down. There, that's it's, a committee really has nothing to do with holding prices okay, down, like stabilizing Kumar, prices. We, but we it's not as if we are not going to work towards right. the stabilization so there, of there prices. Are, there either. are some committees that will be recast and uh, and uh, work also uh, the way they were supposed to perhaps yes. or in a, in a more efficient streamlined way that is that's Absolutely. the point the BJP is making. MK Veno, I want to ask you, we're looking at a Prime Minister who has sort of really hit the ground running. He has a small cabinet. He talks about efficiency. He's empowered the bureaucrats. He is collapsing ministries in order to make sure there's better uh, inter interconnectivity between some of them. Uh, we're seeing GOMs being disbanded. Now we're seeing this about the committees as well. You haven't seen the effect of all this here. Oh. So what are you saying the effect is? See, I'll tell you, uh, by, there is too much talk about uh, this minimum gov government, maximum governance is still a slogan. Now, minimum government in a classical sense, in a Thatcherite sense means you actually reduce the gov number of government employees. You know, you privatize public sector so that government gets out of the business that it's not supposed to be. So you, you actually shrink the government in the numbers. Here, in terms of numbers, government is not shrunk. They are merely just, uh, as Lalita says, recasting ministries to, to make, it, make them more efficient, which, is, which may be true. They are doing it. But if you see Modi's uh, reply in parliament today to the presidential, uh, in the presidential debate, he is talking about by 2022, on a war footing, providing a roof over people's heads, uh, toilets, uh, drinking water, siksha, uh, uh, swast. I mean, all these public services to be scaled up on such a massive scale that he's talking about, you actually will need more government. It's a fact that today, on a, on a per, per, so uh, per 100,000 population, we have less teachers, we have less policemen, we have less health workers. Mr. So Mr. I, I, I'm, I'm saying that actually government here. will have to, quality okay. government will have to increase. All right, let's yeah. take that back to Arun Myra. Uh, the fact that MK Venu no, no, is can making I that you to be in here. Yeah, can Ms. I just, Kumar, to we'll just, I just have one thing to say? Yeah, go ahead. I just have one thing to say, please. Just just one sentence and go then ahead. I let the others speak. Go ahead. See, Mr. Venu has pointed out that the government has got too many employees. But the fact also is that government no, no, throughout the country, regardless of which state or at the center, uh, one of the commonest complaints is that the people who work in the government don't work at all. We call them all lazy people who really don't do any work. All they do is sit around, you know, half the time wasting their time drinking chai and going out for lunch and stuff like that. Perhaps now today we can put them to better use. Yeah. The fact is that yes, we want to do things on a war footing o because overall it's time you need more that workers in the social things sector. Are done on saying, a war footing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's, we've just let's come in for one. Uh, we've not even been I, in government for yeah. the last two weeks. Can I come in? So yeah. We're not yes. about to shrink in? the government size so soon. Can I? Perhaps you could look at it as us trying to. Yes. Ms. Kumar Mangalam, let Arun Myra, let Arun Myra come in on this. All right, uh, Mr. Myra. Yes. The fact no, is, we're talking about. May I? Yeah. May I say? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. We are talking about getting things done. We are talking about getting things done. And uh, what are the best ways to ensure that now in the country we'll get things done? What we need is much better management and I think much less, if I can say, uh, discussions about economics and policies. We've had too much of that and too little management. Now, here, yes, to get the outcomes, we've got to be very conscious that things that need to be done need to be done on time and in a proper order. Okay? And I found in my experience in the last five years in government that there was too little attention to organizing to get things done. The point about consultation that Harsh has brought in is a very valid point. But I might say that I have observed committees and committees 
Just the fact that you have a committee doesn't mean that there's consultation. These committees do their work in a very pro forma fashion. They invite some people, give them half an hour to have their say. They invite some presentations from them or representations which are seen by somebody or not seen at all by everybody in the committee. And then they declare that, right. well, we have consulted. Things are put up onto websites and say in 30 days give us your comments. People don't even know that the invitation is on the website. So having a committee doesn't mean you're going to have consultation. It's good process for consultation. You can have fewer committees, fewer persons and have much better consultation, much better absorption of the various points of view to come to a conclusion. We needed much better organization to get things done. And I'm very pleased that that is what we're talking about. How do we organize to get things done? Right. On time, with less okay. resources, All right. and with due consideration and consultation. Okay, Harsh Mandar, I want to bring this to you, and then we're being joined by a spokeswoman of the Congress as well, Priyanka Chaturvedi from Mumbai. But before we go to her, I'm going to ask Harsh Mandar, uh, one, of course, the fact that uh, Arun Myra is saying that committees by themselves don't always ensure there is discussion and consultation. And in fact, many of them have often not really done any work. The second point that MK Venu is making that streamlining government isn't about disbanding committees and GOMs. It's possibly also increasing the workforce because these, these goals that are being set out uh, will require a lot of manpower. Actually, I, I'm in full agreement with both points. I agree with both points. Uh, firstly, because I think that uh, it is true that a large number of the committees that, that the bureaucracy generally often sets up, uh, but also uh, particularly in the last regime, were uh, you know performer uh, committees which delayed decision making. And so you had endless thinking and thinking and thinking. So a food security bill, uh, it al almost took four years for a government to take a decision about it, it went through any number of committees and discussions, whereas it really needed, uh, you know, th there had to be people sitting around month, two months, and they should have taken a decision. So I think that it, the, 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 the criticism is fair that, that committees have been used very often for delaying decision making right. and avoiding decision making, and to that extent it's welcome if that's streamlined. But the other point that Venu has made is that I do think that, it, that we, uh, his point is uh, actually an extremely good one that we are really talking about redeploying, reskilling government. I think uh, rather than reducing the scale, uh, if we are if we are continuing to believe that the state will be responsible for a large number of social sector programs, so it is you know getting uh, more teachers, for instance, more health workers uh, who, who are qualified uh, right. in, in position, officers. and people who are who who, who are more legal officers, uh, are more judges. Okay. Uh, better uh, better train numbers of policemen, police persons, etc. All right, let's go across to Priyanka Chaturvedi. She's joined us late on the debate, so we're not sure how much of it she has heard. But one of the uh, sort of charges that has been leveled, that have been leveled against the UPA government, is that basically there were too many people doing far too little work. In fact, uh, but comparing sizes of the cabinet, as far as these committees are concerned as well, uh, the new government streamlined them, bringing them together, collapsing them, collapsing ministries, getting them to work together uh, much more. When you hear the criticism that the, the UPA government had X number of people doing the job of one or two people, uh, what do you say? I mean, there was such a wastage of resources. That's the allegation. No, absolutely not. I, I find that quite unfair. You, If you have something to criticize us, you can criticize us on many other issues. But saying that policy came to a, policy decisions came to a stop because of uh, GOMs or EGOMs would be a little unfair simply because a uh, lot of policy uh, bills were held on uh, because there was a parliament disruption constantly. So having said that, we also need to understand what these uh, GOMs, EGOMs, now this, this is totally the new government's prerogative what they do. But putting the blame on and saying that there will be better accountability be because they streamlined it, but whether the streamlining works. Now, when we see the kind of ministry, the allocation of ministry that they've done in terms of you know reducing minimum governance, what they've done is made it very disjointed. Lots of uh, cabinet ministers have very disjointed roles. Like you, you can look at Mr. Arun Jaitley, whose uh, three different roles have three different uh, profiles totally altogether. They are not uh, uh, seamless, I'd say. 
and um, again i just like to say you can uh, judge us for uh, decisions uh, many other things but you cannot judge us on the basis okay. of policy all right uh, priyanka you know, jagruti mk venu wants to mk venu trying to take in as many opinions as possible okay mk venu wants to respond to what you're saying go ahead no no my i mean I, I, basically i'm saying that the the previous government has so many gomms and egoms over 40 or 45 partly because the personality of the prime minister he 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 was throwing up a lot of uh, you know consultation on uh, decisions but uh, to how to, much to consultation is yeah is so so I, it was excessive consultation we did not i mean it, it at one time it had become a joke 50 gums egums pranam mukherjee being yeah. the head of 35 of them and even if pranam mukherjee had uh, in a year he would only get a, uh, you know that many uh, those many days to have meetings so so i think it was the indecisiveness of uh, uh, i would say the pm pmo and the cabinet which had created that situation which in this case uh, with this kind of a majority 283 also because earlier was a coalition right they so they don't need those many uh, committee and the pmo itself is very strong and we are told arun chauri says it will be a presidential style uh, the american presidential style uh, you know pmo with with lots of uh, you know empowered officials So, so we are comparing apples and oranges. So, it's a different kind of government. Two eighty-three seats. So, so I think the issue is not that issue. Whether indeed is Modi providing? Uh, is he actually minimizing government? Is he cutting government? I don't think he's cutting the size of government. All right. Let, let Lalita Kumar Mangalam also come in on that. Is he cutting down the size of the government? We have very little time left. So, thirty seconds to you, Ms. Kumar Mangalam. Good governance doesn't necessarily mean you have to set, uh, cut the size exactly, of the government. Yeah. Yo, Good governance you. means that you have to get the gov- uh, government to govern, which is you get the present people to work better. Whether it's through okay. reskilling, retraining, etc., these are all words. The fact is that we can make this current government work. Didn't Mr. Modi do it in Gujarat? Hasn't it been done in several other states? You don't necessarily have to cut down the size. You have to make them more productive. All right. That so we're is looking what at, good governance. We're looking is. at more efficiency, and we're looking at and moving away. And that is away, what the BJP is setting out to do. Moving away from and the, will do. All right. We're moving away from the slogans now of the campaign and a government taking office to the actual work on the ground that's going to be required moving forward. We're completely out of time on this discussion. Maximum governance, minimum government. That's the mantra of this new government. They seem to be taking steps in that direction. Uh, let's see where it goes. Thanks a lot. That's all we have time for tonight on the Buck Stops here. Thanks for watching.